Welcome to your English 7 concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. Okay? Let's go. Today we are discussing the literary concept of conflict. Conflict is central to literature. In fact, one could contend that it is the most important element of any story. Without a conflict, no story would happen. The conflict is the problem the characters try to solve through the course of the story. It is the challenge that they face. The challenge is introduced in the story and the characters try to resolve it. They make mistakes. They see success. They face challenge. The conflict may resolve positively for the characters or it may resolve negatively. They may have to change themselves in order to defuse the conflict. However the conflict resolves and however long the conflict lasts, it drives the story and it is the problem that our characters try to overcome. That's the definition of conflict, but let's understand some principles of that definition. First, one story often presents many conflicts. So do not rest assured that you can find one conflict and be done with your analysis. In fact, you may find several. Some of them may be very clear and on the surface. Some of them may be merely implied. But you can generally find several conflicts in any story, even a short one. Secondly, one conflict may be more important than another, and we would call this the primary conflict as opposed to the secondary. So, if you decide to write a piece about a conflict in a story, you may choose to write about the primary conflict as opposed to one of the secondaries. Or, you may write a more complex piece talking about how several conflicts exist, but one is more important, making it the primary conflict. But it is important to understand that conflicts exist in diversity in stories. Try to find more than one. What are the conflicts, though? Well, we can start to answer that question by considering person versus something else. Person versus some kind of antagonist. The person in the story, of course, is the character, and the antagonist is the thing that opposes them. I say thing because the antagonist will differ from conflict to conflict. We can take a look at four basic conflicts within literature. Person versus person. This conflict would be called a personal conflict. And that is when one character has a conflict with another character. We'll add detail later. A person could be in conflict with nature, and we would call this an environmental conflict. So the person may be trying to achieve their goals, but the function of nature and the environment is standing in their way. Third, a person might be in conflict with society itself, the rules and traditions of that group, and we would call this a social conflict. Finally, and the last and most different of the conflicts, is the self-conflict, person versus self, which we would call the internal conflict. This is when a character is in conflict with some part of their own personality. Notice the adjective, internal conflict. There is only one internal conflict, and that is person versus self. However, the other three conflicts, personal, environmental, and social, can be considered external conflicts because that conflict focuses on something outside the character. So in understanding conflict, you could take a look at it in two ways. You could say there are only two conflicts, external and internal, and that would be one way to categorize. Or you could say that there are four conflicts, personal, environmental, social, and internal. Both answers are correct, and both interpretations could be useful based upon what your goals are in analysis. But let's take a look more clearly at the definitions of each of these types of conflict. These are the four types of conflict, personal, environmental, social, and internal. Let's take a look at each in turn, starting with person versus person, the personal conflict. In this conflict, the goals or interests of the protagonist conflict with the goals or interests of the antagonist who is another character, they cannot both have their way. This definition contains a lot of words, but let's look at what's important. 
first of all, we have a protagonist. The protagonist is the character with whom we are sympathetic, the hero of the story. So that must be a character. Secondly, we can see the antagonist. And the antagonist is the character that opposes the protagonist. Importantly, they cannot both have their way. If one character gets what they want, the other character cannot have what they want, and vice versa. This requires us to take a look at goals and interests of both parties. What do these people want? Let's go back and take a look at environmental conflict. In a person versus nature conflict, the goals or interests of the protagonist conflict with the natural function of the environment. What does that mean? Well, let's think about natural function of the environment. What would the natural function of an environment be? It could be the gravity associated with bodies. So somebody falling from a great height, we could look at as the natural function of the environment called gravity. It could be heat. It could be a weather pattern. However you want to look at it, we must always look at what is naturally inherent in the environment. And often that's fairly simple, like a snowstorm or a tornado. In the third and last external conflict, the social conflict, we see a person arrayed against society. But before we look at that definition, I want to make an important observation. Students often think that in a person versus society conflict, one person is in conflict with a group of people. That's not necessarily the case. Let's take a war, for instance. One nation arrayed against another nation in conflict over land or economy or some other issue. We would consider that a person versus person conflict just on a grand scale. One person or nation has one interest, another person or nation has another interest, and those interests conflict. If that's the case, you might ask, well, what is a person versus society conflict? How is the social conflict different? In this conflict, the protagonist's goals or interests conflict with the rules or traditions of their society. So we are not talking about conflicting with another person. We're talking about conflicting with the rules or traditions that are usually not created by one person. In fact, by definition, they are created by a society, a group of people. Let me give you a clear example from your own experience. If in school you have a conflict with a rule, let's say a dress code rule or a cell phone usage rule or a tardiness rule, then you are in conflict with that rule, not necessarily the teacher or principal who enforces it. Your principal did not create the rules of the school. More likely, those rules have been created by the society through the school board and they are probably the values and traditions of the entire community. So can you blame your principal for the rule that you don't like? No, you would focus on the rule itself and the society that created it. It's not an individual, it's not a group. Rather, it is a function of society that you are in conflict with. Students often have a little bit of difficulty at first until they remind themselves of the definition. Look at a rule or a tradition or a value in society not toward an individual person. Finally, let's look at the definition of the internal conflict, person versus self. In a person versus self conflict, the protagonist experiences two goals or interests but cannot achieve both, or he or she must overcome a personal failing. I can give you a fairly simple example, probably called from your own experience. Imagine waking up in the morning your alarm rings and you don't want to get up so early you don't want to drag yourself out of bed because bed is enjoyable. You like sleeping. But you know that if you stay in bed you can't be a responsible moral person. You can't be that student that you want to be and live up to the expectations of yourself and everybody else. You want two things and you cannot have both. You want to stay in bed and you want to get up. This is an internal conflict, even if it is on a very mild scale. You choose to get up, of course, because being a moral and responsible person and living up to expectations is more important to you than the momentary physical pleasure of staying in bed. In an internal conflict, the character faces this type of dilemma between two different goals or interests. 
that we would call mutually exclusive, which means you cannot have both at the same time. These are the four types of conflict, personal, environmental, social, and internal. And understanding their definitions will help you understand how to analyze conflict in literature and how to understand stories more clearly. Still not clear on the definitions? Let's try to apply them. This is a simple conflict analysis scheme. We would look at so the protagonist in a conflict, the antagonist in a conflict, and their conflicting motivations. Let's create a story, a simple story, a story about Susie. Let's say that Susie wants to eat a piece of cake, and it is the last piece of cake. There is only one left, but Jody enters our story, and Jody also wants to eat that last piece of cake. They cannot both have the piece of cake because only one is left. So they are engaged in a personal conflict. Susie's interests are in conflict with Jody's interests, and they cannot both have their way. How will this resolve? Well, Susie could have the cake and she would win, or Jody could have the cake and she would win, or they could both modify their motivations and split the cake into two pieces. Thus, their motivation is now to eat half a piece of cake instead of the whole piece of cake. I think that's the happier end of the story, but however the story ends, this is a personal conflict and a fairly simple one. Let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated and from the literature that we've read. Let's look at Ye Shen. Ye Shen is a simple girl with simple goals and interests. She is motivated by living happily and making choices for herself. She wants what most of us want, to be happy and to make her own choices. Unfortunately, her stepmother is in the story as well, and her stepmother has crueler motivation. Her stepmother wishes to humiliate and repress Ye Shen. Those motivations are in conflict. If the stepmother humiliates and represses Ye Shen, Ye Shen will not live happily or make her own choices. If Ye Shen lives happily and makes her own choices, her stepmother will not be able to do what she wants, which is to humiliate and repress Ye Shen. This is, again, a personal conflict, where two characters have interests, and those interests are mutually exclusive. Once again, mutually exclusive means that they cannot both exist at the same time. If stepmother gets what she wants, Ye Shen does not get what she wants, and vice versa. Let's do this one more time, and let's look at a different conflict from a different story. Let's look at Icarus from the flight of Icarus. Icarus, being the child that he is, wishes to enjoy himself with no hesitation. He wishes to simply enjoy life and not worry about the consequences. The antagonist for Icarus is nature. Nature will oppose his ability to enjoy himself without worrying about the consequences. And as we think about nature's motivation, we must remember that nature doesn't really have a motivation in the same sense that a character does. Rather, nature has a function. And in this story, two functions present themselves as relevant, heat and gravity. The heat of the sun and the gravity of being in the air both conflict with what Icarus wants, which is simply to enjoy himself with no hesitation. This is an environmental conflict. Icarus cannot do what he wants because nature prevents him from doing it. And unfortunately, we know the end of that story. What conflict can you find in a story? Remember, several conflicts probably exist, but if you analyze according to the definitions that you've heard in this video, and you use this basic framework, you can find a conflict and express it clearly in writing and discussion.